All right, the clock is on. Um, in terms of our investment approach, I think uh, we come out of a, a context of, of the Alan Gray Investment House, and they've always been known for taking a very long-term approach. And so our approach, as much as we can, in terms of making investments, is looking at things for the long term. Um, and the picture there is just of, of these fascinating rubber bridges in, in India. Uh, basically, they are bridges that are planted on either side of the river. And they take more than a decade to even connect for the first time. But once they're connected uh, and they grow stronger and stronger, uh, they, they are far more powerful than any of the, the man-made bricks and mortar type bridges that are built in that part of, of India. And I think that's the power of thinking long term. And, you know, the initial efforts are, are very limited and, and seem like they're, they're faltering. But if one sustains the course and continues in that same direction, you, you create something that lasts for centuries. In terms of deal breakers, what are the, the non-negotiables? And I suppose as soon as you say something is non-negotiable, you could find an example uh, a little while later of, of having broken that non-negotiable. But anyway, the, the, the building blocks that we would be looking for are, are firstly, I think it, you know, we, we're in such a resource-constrained uh, country with so many issues, it has to be a critical need. And it has to be a, a need where there's evidence supporting the work that's happening, or at least the prospect of generating evidence through, through the work that you're doing, because there is often a, a paucity of, of evidence, of, of hardcore evidence. Um, secondly, I think we have to understand the role of, of philanthropy as being, or at least attempting to be, catalytic. It's very small in the bigger scheme of things in terms of the funds and resources it has available, but, but yet it is given a freedom in terms of its much, if you look at the constraints that government is under in terms of all the, the, the processes and stakeholders you saw earlier, there's an incredible freedom that, that is given to philanthropy, and they must harness that for things that, that can be catalytic. And the last point there is just having the right leadership. Um, in terms of the, the, the biggest lesson from failure, um, the, the image there is really about having these holy cows. Um, and uh, it's more to do with work that we've done outside of, of literacy. Uh, but essentially, there would be a kind of idea of what we should do and how it's going to work. And in fact, the first plan that Alan had 15 years ago was on a two-page document. And, and you could actually see exactly what's happening now in that program hasn't changed at all from that two-page document. Now, that's probably the a strength in terms of focus uh, and, and long-term thinking, but it also it loses that sense of flexibility and experimentation that you need. I think if we have these holy cars, if we're not willing to learn and change course as we get new evidence, uh, we find ourselves uh, wasting the resources that, that could have been used, used a lot better. So I think the biggest learning for us is to be far more agile, far more open uh, uh, for experimentation, to really try and find out what, what does actually work, as opposed to just pretending that things work. Um, so, so Nick gave us a small budget um, of, of um, 500 million. Um, and you know, I think the, the, the key point about what would be used for, for additional funding is, is firstly that, uh, that, that philanthropy needs to be looking at what are the gaps and, 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 and how can we build the research evidence for things that happen. So I think you know, it would be orientated around those of trying to find the gaps. It's not, philanthropy is not about doing the mass scale I events um, and, and activities. So, so I think there's a lot of work in terms of building the infrastructure around languages that, that would be, could be applied to. Uh, I think building in more numeracy as we work together with numeracy and literacy is another area. Um, you know, we've, we've spoken a lot about, about coaches. I think understanding the models of coaching, the qualifications of coaching, how we can make it um, kind of cost effective in terms of how it could be done if it is going to be done at scale. Teaching assistance, kind of bringing in other areas. I mean, we can start linking into to some of the unemployment issues in this country. So I think there, there's some very exciting opportunities in terms of that. Uh, I'm an accountant by, by training. Um, so my simple message uh, to the president is, you know, where, where's the money? Um, <laughs>